Just like every other year, this year too, Google released the preview version of what would eventually be called Android Oreo. Oreo is a live testament to Google's commitment towards making Android the most secure and feature-rich mobile platform. It tightens the security of the platform and also brings a number of new features to an already mature platform. In this video, we're going to cover extensively what Oreo has to offer and how it stacks up against its elder brother, Android Nougat 7.0. So without further ado, let's get started. One of the more noticeable visual changes in Android Oreo compared to Android Nougat has to be the quick settings area. While Nougat stuck with the dark and light gray combination for the quick settings panel, Oreo switched it out to a more contrasting white shade. This is a dividing feature and it's sort of set up two camps. One that hates this change and the other that is kind of okay with it. There's also a behavioral change in how quick settings toggles work. On previous versions, you expanded the quick settings shade and tapped on a toggle to open it. But on Oreo, just tapping on the toggle simply turns it off or on. Oreo is also the third iteration of Android where the way the system handles notifications has changed. It takes all the great features from Nougat and makes it better. Android Oreo is introducing notification channels which are basically categories that an app can classify its notifications into. So suppose you have an e-commerce app installed on your phone which sends you notifications about offers every morning which by the way you don't want you can disable the notification for that particular channel. If you disable notifications on Nougat, it will block all the notifications from that app, which sort of means that the critical notifications like an update or order delivery failure would also not come through. With Audio, however, you can disable individual channels so that you don't get spammed, but at the same time, you don't miss out on any critical notification. Channels offer a fine-grained control over how notifications work and would certainly improve the user experience. Another new enhancement in notifications is the introduction of the snooze feature, which basically means you can temporarily dismiss the notifications and get reminded about it at a later stage. You can snooze a notification by swiping in either direction slowly to reveal the snooze button. Oreo also includes a subtle animation for transitioning between the stacked notification and the list. It's hard to explain it in text, but it's a nice touch overall to the system. The settings app is another area on Android Oreo which has seen a visual overhaul. While Nougat introduced the navigation drawer for settings on Android, Oreo does away with it. Not only did Oreo switch out the notification drawer, it also changed the way individual settings are bundled. They are now grouped together by topics, which in turn results in a shorter list in the settings app. Individual settings within the app also received some UI enhancements. Apple introduced 3D Touch with the iPhone 6s and that added a new dimension of interaction users can have with their iOS devices. Android brought app shortcuts as an answer to that. It was great and all, but Oreo is taking it to a whole new level. With Oreo, you now get notification dots, which are essentially a new way of interacting with apps. Whenever you get a notification, the app will show a dot on it on long pressing the icon and you'll get to see the exact contents of the notification. You can then interact with it or swipe it to dismiss the notification. We all know and love the flexibility that Android provides when it comes to installing or rather sideloading an application that you downloaded from places apart from the Play Store. Before Oreo, it was really easy to do so. You just had to head over the settings, tap on security and enable unknown sources. Once you were done, you would be able to install apps seamlessly. But Oreo doubles down on security and as a measure of disabling apps from installing other apps themselves, on Oreo, you will have to individually grant permissions for each source that you obtain an APK from. This does add a bit of work on the user's end, but you can't add a price to security. 
The Android platform has been a battery hogger since its early days. But ever since Lollipop, Google has tried making innovation on the platform to maximize efficiency by minimizing battery consumption. With Marshmallow, they introduced Doze, which put devices in a state of deep sleep to conserve battery. And on Nougat, they took it a bit further with Doze on the go, which added these benefits to the system while the device was with the users and on the go. This has significantly increased the battery life on Android devices, but there was definitely room for more improvement. Oreo introduced a limitation on background processes to improve battery life even more. Apps are now imposed with more stricter restrictions with respect to location updates, running background tasks and registering system broadcasts. The difference that this new imposition has brought is quite significant. Lollipop switched out Dalvik, the legacy Android runtime, for Art, which significantly improves the performance. With Android Audio, the runtime is now twice as fast than the previous releases, which results in faster boot time and an overall fast and snappy Android experience. Oreo has added multiple other user interface changes to Android. These changes essentially enrich the user's experience, and one of them would be the Autofill framework. Until now, Autofill was available as an option only in Chrome, but with Oreo, the system will be able to suggest credentials and form details within apps. This also means that password managers like 1Password and LastPass will automatically enter the passwords for you without you having to manually feed them in. Another welcome change on Android Oreo is the picture-in-picture -picture mode. While Android Nougat introduced a new means of multitasking with apps with the multi-window mode, Oreo adds an additional layer of functionality over it with picture-in-picture -picture mode. Apps like video calling apps, maps, and video players can now surface their content on top of existing apps, giving you the ability of true multitasking. If you want to take this to another level, you can probably try picture-in-picture -picture with the multi-window feature. All in all, Oreo has shaped up to be a pretty great Android release with more enhancement on the inside compared to shiny new visual changes. It will be a while before Oreo starts showing up on actual devices, but it does bring the promise of finally having solved the fragmentation problem on Android. Well folks, that's all that we have for you in this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay updated about all our future content. If you like the video, throw in a thumbs up so we know we are doing a good job. Until next time, this is me Pratik signing off.